What's going on, guys? It is uh, 3.26 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, February the 20th, 2024. I didn't get a chance to do a video or any type of content on um, Tyson Fury when he got cut in sparring. Uh, which calls the uh, fight that was supposed to happen this past weekend between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. It's supposed to be on uh, February the 17th, but it got postponed because Tyson Fury got cut in sparring. Uh, a lot of people thought it was fake or that, you know, he just wanted out of the fight, given his history of pulling out of fights, saying he's going to retire, saying he's going to fight until he's 40 years old. Saying he's going, you know, he's just been very all over the place the last uh, 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 four or five years or so. But overall, if you want to ask me personally, I do think, you know, um, it was no foul play, freak accident. He legitimately got cut in sparring. And also we found out that there's a penalty likely because of Tyson Fury that if he was to pull out the fight, he would be fined something like uh, 10 million dollars or something by the Saudis. So uh, this took place on February the 2nd. Um, the fight is now going to take place on May the 18th. From my understanding, the pay-per-view price here in the States was going to be $69.99. Remember the last Saudi pay-per-view that was headlined by Anthony Joshua, Adewaline, Deontay Wilder, uh, Joseph uh, Parker, um, Daniel Dubois, Joe Big Baby Miller, uh, Philip Hergovitz, Mark DeMore, Frank Sanchez, I forgot who he fought, but um, that was $39.99. So I was hoping that the Saudis was going to keep that up, but apparently not. So before we go any further, I didn't get a chance to watch this trailer here for the fight. Um, the Saudis have been uh, uh, really putting money into their marketing for these events like this shit, you know, but anyway, let me shut up. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. And of course, we're going to be here covering the fight. I did watch the press conference. Um... I just like how the Saudis are making these fighters active and, you know, they're putting the foot on their ass and paying them handsomely to like, hey, like, let's make the big fights happen. In reality, I'm cool with it. And I wish that other promoters would fall in line, especially if they're giving out this money. And I'm talking to you, PBC. And Deontay Wilder is not really a PBC fighter anymore, nor is uh, Frank Sanchez. I didn't watch this. A tale as old as time. A legendary champion in search of another champion. Damn, this shit fire already. Has found his match. A duel that transcends bullets and dust. Both men undefeated. Both men. Larger than life itself. Facing each other under the watchful eye of history. Beyond blood, sweat and fire. And the mercy of the rough seas. By the ravaging rival! Oh, sweet rival! And their fists will speak a language older than words! They will speak loudly! And there is just one way to be remembered for all of eternity! Whoa, I like that. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. We need more of that. We need more of that. Here's what uh, David Hay had to say, by the way. I was really looking forward to that fight, man. Remember, uh, Tyson Fury gave David Hay so much shit uh, uh, for the cut. I remember I did a video on that years ago. Looking forward to Saudi, looking forward to the undisputed fight, the one that's going to shut everybody up because everyone's got opinion. Everybody seems to know what... 
what's going to happen, including me. And uh, you get the news. Fight's cancelled. Not happening or postponed. More likely, Tyson Fury suffers a cut a couple weeks before the fight. I know that pain all so well. I remember in 2013 when I was scheduled to fight uh, Tyson Fury. I myself suffered a cut a week before the fight. And oh, did I not hear the end of it from him? Uh, even, even to this day, you know, I still hear, you know, oh, you only got cut because you didn't want to fight him, you're scared. I was the big favorite, just like he's the big favorite in this fight. And sometimes shit just happens. And that's part of the sport. I actually remember at the time thinking, oh, I hope one day before one of his big fights, he, he has to suffer this, so he's been that much of a dick about it. And here we are. But I don't feel that good about it at all. I get no pleasure from him having to pull out of a fight that I really wanted him and the rest of the world wanted to see take place. Um, the likelihood is we're probably going to get Philip Hergovic as the replacement, I'd, I'd, I'd say. Great, great replacement. Not ideal on two weeks' notice. I'm not sure if uh, a man, a young man having his first big shot at the heavyweight championship will be happy with two weeks' preparation against a tricky southpaw. I don't think that's going to work in his benefit. But sometimes when you're young, you're fresh, you've got to take the opportunities when they present themselves. He's got himself now, I believe, uh, a shot at the unified heavyweight champion world. So he could throw a big spanner in the works. You know, he's a very, very capable fighter. And ironically, Philip Hergovic was the guy who cut me before my fight with Tyson Fury. So it's funny how it all works out. But um, I'm wishing Tyson Fury a very, very speedy recovery. And I hope he, unlike myself, when I started training for the cut, the, the fight after the cut fix, I ended up needing shoulder surgery and was out of the ring for three and a half years. I really, truly wish that. Well, he was uh, wrong because they did uh, uh, reschedule the fight. This was before um, it was announced that it was going to be a new date. Uh, David, hey, there's rumors that he's going to be trying to come back, too. What is Tyson Fury talking about? By the way, look, listen, you got to give the man credit. Phenomenal shape. But you gotta, he ain't been in this type of shape, like, in years. Like, I really think that he's taking this fight seriously. You know, I'm glad that the Saudis have been able to, uh, like, really, like, have him on the leash. Here is uh, Usyk's uh, uh, manager, promoter, handler. Wish you the soonest recovery. God sent you a sign. Think of retirement, brother. <laughs> Funny. You know, but yeah, Dubin keeping him in check. I've had 35 professional fights. I've been boxing 18 years of my life. I've climbed off the canvas 10 times of the biggest punches in history to win. Never a coward. Never backed down from any man in my life. And if any man calls my wife a bitch, I take his fucking teeth out. Do you I didn't call your wife a bitch. I didn't He's call your wife a bitch. I, I don't do. He's got a bitch to I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that shit. I don't do that shit. Well, well, I'll apologize hey, for that then, because I shit, thought you said about my wife, happens. and I'm no shit fucking happens. coward. I boxed all my life. Shit happens. Shit happens, brother. How you call me a they, coward? You've never boxed in your life. How am I a coward? I did. I've had 35 professional fights. I'm a two-time undefeated heavyweight champion. I'm the second longest reigning lineal champion in history. How am I a coward? Let's see the answer. Let's, let's see the coward. No, 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 let's see the answer in the 18th of May. We will I, have I, I, the prize of May 18th is going to be finito. I, I do, <laughs> I do. I do. Be, no, you're all going to be working for me as dossers, you ugly little bastard. Never call me a coward again. Yeah, I did weird uh, read some weird quote um, coming from somebody that uh, uh, you know something about calling his wife a bee or or referring to her as uh, uh, such. But you know, let me tell you something. I guess I need to get into my uh, uh, preview. Listen, Tyson Fury is a very special fighter, very special fighter. I don't think that he took Francis and Ganu seriously, um, but to see the shape that he's in now. And this is the biggest fight of his career. Usyk ain't no joke. I mean, yeah, he's getting a little bit of a reputation for having a jelly belly. You know, he's been the only time you've seen Usyk really vulnerable is from body shots. It's been going on his career and the amateurs everywhere. You know, he a little soft down there. Now, Fury can be a very competent body puncher when he wants to be. You know, Fury can be the total package. 
You know, now the question is, as far as Usyk is, is concerned, what type of fight is Fury going to try to fight? Is he going to try to box Usyk, keep him on the outside? Now, remember, I've met uh, Usyk is about six foot four. I met him in uh, Philadelphia at uh, Vozdik versus Bert Biev. You know, he was with a uh, Vozdik from uh, Ukraine and all. Um, Loma was here, too. And uh, Tyson Fury, I've seen him. He was at that same fight. Have I met Tyson Fury in person? No, I don't think I ever have. But I was there when he was at, um, uh, I think it was at the Carl Frampton fight, the fight that he was supposed to fight in Philly, but he got his hand uh, broken in a hotel. Or it was at that Volstic fight, too. I don't remember. But either way, like, you know, Tyson Fury, he is a big dude. Some may say 6'7", you know, 6'9", but the, the point is, like, he's a, he's a big dude. You know, and he knows how to throw his weight around. Now, I, I, I got to be honest. You know, I'm leaning more towards Usyk. I'm wondering, concerned about the passion of Tyson Fury. You know, there are some concerns there. But one thing for sure is I'm glad that it's happening. And I really do believe they're going to step into the ring on, uh, on uh, May the 18th. We're going to be here, by the way, uh, covering this fight. Let me go see here real quick. I was supposed to be looking at the undercard, actually. I forgot what the undercard was. And in a perfect world, we'll have the winner go on to fight the winner of uh, Joshua Ngannou later on this year. That would make perfect sense. So, here's the undercard. And I'm going to give you my rating. Cordina versus a uh, Anthony Carsese. Carse I forgot how you pronounce his last name. Nice little solid fight. Opatia versus Breedis. You know, I'm interested in that rematch. Um, very, very good fight right there. Uh, Sergey Kovalev versus, he's at Cruiserweight, by the way, versus uh, Robin Woman Beater. Damn, Woman Beaters. We should have beat that Woman Beater down. You like that shit? You like this guy, Woman Beater? He must have learned it from his dad. Woman Beater, baby. We're going to beat that Woman Beater. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen this dude fight before. Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. But he's been fighting on American cards. I've probably seen him in passing. Uh, Robin Safar. Isaac Lowe, Hasibala Akmidi. I don't, this guy right here, he's on the same, uh, Moses uh, Atuma. He's on the same level of a Richard Torres to me. Exciting, explosive, but where's the skill? I'm not there yet, you know? I'm not there yet. This dude is supposed to be really good. People have been telling me to look out for him. The Uzbekistanian. I've seen him fight a couple of times, but I haven't really paid attention, like really, really, really researched. But yeah, you know, um, uh, May the 18th. I like Fury, though, man. But it's like, you know, like I, I just have concerns. But see, seeing this right here, it does give me hope because dude's in shape. This does give me hope that he's taking this shit seriously. You know that he, you know, and he slowed down on his social media bullshit. You know, and maybe that Francis Ngannou fight really, really woke him up, like, you know, nearly losing to, I think he won, but he should he he barely edged it. You're nearly losing to an MMA fighter in his pro debut. And I'm not shitting on Francis Ngannou. Dude can box. You know, he's shown that. He's shown that an MMA fighter can actually come over and actually, you know, do something. But I think that a focus Tyson Fury will probably stop Francis Ngannou or wipe him out. Let's say 12-round fight. Phew, uh, eight rounds to four. No disrespect, Francis Ngannou, but I'm sorry. You know, you got to do it twice. Let's see how he looks against Anthony Joshua on uh, March the uh, 18th. We're going to be here covering that, by the way. And also, as you can see here, he is ranked number 10 by the WBC. Francis Ngannou. WBO has it. I'm surprised the WBA ain't jump on it yet. You know, they're money hungry grubbers. Deontay Wilder done to me. He just don't seem like he got it no more. Want to fight. It's thinning out up here at the top. It's thinning out. The Game of Thrones that was all those years ago, it's, it's thinning out. And now you got guys like Fury, Usyk, Joshua still in the mix, but he's been defeated multiple times. Uh, but he's still in the mix. Felix Hergovitz, you know, Joseph Parker's back in the mix. Daniel Dubois, you know, that's the top. That's the cream of the crop right there. That's the top of the top. You know, Frank Sanchez budding right there on the outside. But let me tell you something. Who are my top five heavyweights right now? Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk, Anthony Joshua. Joseph Parker, Felix Hergovitz. How's that sound? How's that sound? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Uh, oh, and also, I am going to be here for uh, Fabio Wortley versus uh, Fraser Clark. I just don't find Fraser Clark that good. I'm picking Fabio Wortley. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Oh, 
And a good fight that I'm looking forward to is you got F.A. Jogba taking on Luis Ortiz likely on the undercard of Jared Anderson versus I forgot who he's fighting. I forgot who uh, who uh, Effie, I uh, mean, Jared Anderson will be fighting. I forgot. Hold on. Hold on. Rod Murray. All right, the uh, cruiserweight. All right, take your time out. Like the video, subscribe. I'm T Street Controversy with 5 360.